Hey YouTube, this is Leo with Remodeling Calculator and today we're going to be installing this ductless heat pump inside that camper, that RV over there and that heat pump will be heating and uh, on occasion cooling this whole camper so we have this 9000 BTU that's a uh, cooling capacity 33 sear it's pretty much the highest you can get on the market Fujitsu okay and uh, this is a heat pump mini split heat pump and air conditioner so the sear rating is for the air conditioner the HSPF 14 HSPF that's for heating now this heat pump it has 22,000 BTU maximum heating capacity which is more than enough to heat that camper even on the coldest day so the only thing is this is a 240 volt unit so we're bringing a 240 volt service to this camper it's a pretty much permanent location for it for now and then if I need to uh, to make it 110 I can just pump down recover the refrigerant from it and swap to a 110 volt model but the, my plan is actually to put a bunch of solar panels on the roof of that camper and put a split phase inverter so I can have 240 volts in the camper itself going from lithium batteries then being converted to 240 volts so if I need to take it on the road I can still use the camper and the heat pump and I don't need to get 240 volts shore, shore power so that's the plan but for now it's parked here semi-permanently so we're gonna have to bring the service you can see there's a little pipe sticking from the ground this is where the service will come from but basically once it's all said and done it's gonna be a great heating source for this camper especially in the winter this model goes down to minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit and still provides plenty of heat to do this whole RV and today I'll show you every step of the way how to do it I'm putting together a hitch cargo rack and as you can see it's made out of steel and also has no mesh on the bottom so it will allow any ice and condensation to fall through and i will link this in the description below all right guys so right now we're going to prepare our mount for the outdoor condenser what i want to do is i want to raise it off that of this rack i want to raise it by about four inches and uh, that's why i'm doing a double two by four and then i'm going to use the size to attach it here so here me and my daughter were cutting pressure treated two by fours that will create a nailing surface for the condenser unit and also they will add a space underneath the condenser for uh, any potential ice buildup which could cause problems during heating cycles now that additional four inches will make sure there's no ice buildup or that it's minimal now this condenser unit has a heating strip on the bottom so any ice buildup inside the condenser during defrost cycle will melt and uh, then it could accumulate underneath the condenser that's why I'm adding four inches of support and then later I will use u-bolts to attach those two by four standoffs to the cargo rack all right YouTube we are putting in the condenser or the outdoor unit to grab it right. so once it's all ready to go we're going to put clamps over here to hold these wood blocks in place. Thirty-three sear, one of the best, if not the best, single zone mini splits. Okay, so now we're going to start doing the inside part and then connect everything together. So here is how I mounted this condenser unit to this uh, hitch rack over here. I used double two by fours over here. So the reason for that is so that I would have a uh, nailing surface, basically something to screw the condenser unit into. All right, and I used double just to raise it up a little bit more of the of the framing of this uh, rack. And the uh, main reason for that is because this is for heating, and we don't want any ice accumulating underneath it. So just a little bit more clearance on the bottom. Okay, and I use this U-bolts to secure this two by fours to the rack. Okay, and uh, because these were the biggest U-bolts available at the store at the time, I had to modify the two by fours a little bit. I cut grooves over here with the sozzle and on the corners also, so it would fit better. 
and I have this on all four sides. And so then I put double rubber pieces over here on the bottom to minimize vibration and use stainless steel bolts to bolt it down. These are 5 16 bolts. Um, this unit is only 70 pounds and uh, it's very strong and sturdy in there. Now I already drove this unit and uh, everything is good as you can see. And uh, just to also further minimize vibration where it goes into the hitch, I inserted a couple of big uh, washers just so it, it wouldn't uh, vibe like shake too much. All right, but it's been actually working for a year hitting this camper. I was doing a great job. <laughs> All right, so yeah, there you go. This is how I mounted it to the camper back. And uh, if I had a big square rail on the back, I would probably mount it to that. But I had to improvise with the hitch cargo rack. And so when I say that this unit has been working last winter, I don't mean like I went camping once in the middle of the winter. Um, actually, I had a person leaving this RV for the whole year and the whole winter. Uh, this unit has been hitting the camper and it's been doing a really great job and uh, also using very little electricity. Now um, I actually have an Emporia unit which I didn't get a chance to install but I have the same uh, air conditioner heat pump in my house and uh, now the space is much bigger than this because you can actually close the, off the bedroom and it becomes like a 120 square foot space which is very small. My uh, The same unit in my house is hitting 600 square feet of space. So yeah, this has done a great job over last winter hitting this camper and actually when you open the doors to the bedroom it hits the rest of the camper the rest of the cabin it's doing a great job so next i will show you different snapshots or uh, parts of this whole installation and then in a few days i will publish each uh, step of this installation in a separate video detailing all the aspects of this installation but in this video i just want to quickly show you all the steps how it's working out so right now here we're doing the line set and this is one of the more complicated parts of this install line set is also one of the most critical parts of your installation because it carries refrigerant and without refrigerant and a heat pump will not function properly so all the flare connections need to be tight and you need to vacuum the system and make sure that the pressure can that it can hold the pressure so i'll show each step of this install quickly and once again uh, in the later videos i'll show you detailed steps with all the explanations and uh, so on here i'm going to show you how i did the electrical connection for the signal wire i inserted the wire into the connector uh, stripped the ends crimped them and then installed the red black and white on the color matching connectors number one two and three and also put the ground in and so again this is a signal wire that's going to the indoor unit and i did the connection to the actual power line later okay see the clutch but do it a couple of times because sometimes clutch engages too early Okay, that's good. And we have an excellent flare. Okay, great. We're Then I'll show you.
All right, let's call it. Shut this off. Ah, nice. So, all right. So we are going to back seat this. Done. So now the refrigerant is all in this inside the system. <laughs> the refrigerant wasn't circulating, and I'm like replacing all the contacts on the wires and whatnot. And all it is, we didn't open the second valve. Hey, what? Hundred and thirty five volts. Can you see it on the middle on the camera? Yeah, okay. And then we go to ground, we have 117 volts. So we're good. Set power and now we're going to be turning it on. Here's our remote. Now we put this on the Wi Fi, and have a real nice app. Okay. It's hot. <laughs> it's blowing. It's blowing hot air. <laughs> now it's pretty hot. Unfortunately, I don't have a thermometer. It's blowing hot air. <laughs> it's blowing hot air. This is awesome. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. I'm Leo once again. And uh, if you want to know more how to install this, I put all the videos, all the other steps of this installation in the description below. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel, I'll see you in the next one.